uh, chapter six, all arounders, the psychedelics. So let's go ahead and get started. Maybe. There we go. Psychedelics alter a user's perceptions whereby reason becomes unimportant and intensified sensations create illusions, delusions, and hallucinations. Psychedelic fungi and, and uh, plants have been used by the humans since Neanderthal times. Uh, Amanita mushrooms have been used in India for 4,000 years. Belladonna has been used since ancient Greece. Marijuana was snorted in ancient, uh, ancient China. Uh, LSD in the form of rye fungus, ergot, uh, was consumed in Renaissance Europe. Psychedelics are readily used today in several forms and have waxed and waned in their popularity over the years. MDMA, 2.3% uh, uh, of high school seniors used it in 2000. By 2003, MDMA was used, uh, use was down uh, to 1.3%. LSD, 4% uh, percent of uh, high school seniors used it in 1995. By 2006, only 0.6% used it. Marijuana, 37.4% of high school seniors used it in 1979. By 1992, it was down to 11.9%. By 1999, it had risen to 23.9%. By 2006, the percentage had gone down to 18.3%. Marijuana is used uh, the most among whites. Uh, marijuana is used the least among blacks. Hispanics use it somewhere between these other two groups. Psychedelics come in chemical in five chemical configurations: indols, LSD, psilocybin mushrooms, uh, phenyl uh, alkamines, alkalamines. I'm sorry, uh, peyote and MDMA. Anticholinergics: uh, belladonna and datura. Uh, cannabinoids: uh, that would be your marijuana, and those in the class by themselves: ketamine, PCPs, uh, salvia divinorum, and dextromethorphan. The effects of psychedelics is determined by toxicity of the substance, the amount used, the user's experience with the drugs, uh, the emotional makeup of the user, the mood of the mental state at the time of the use, the pre-existing mental illnesses, the surroundings in which the drug is taken. Most hallucinogens stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, which results in rising blood, uh, a pulse and blood pressure, Sweating, palpitations, and nausea. Psychedelics interfere with select neurotransmitters, dopamine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, anandamide, glutamate, alpha uh, but especially serotonin. Psychedelics greatly affect mood because serotonin is amply represented in the limbic system. Stimulation in the reticular formation in the brainstem tends to overload the sensory pathways, making the user act acutely aware of all sensa sensations. Overstimulation of the visual and auditory centers may cause auditory stimulation to jump to the visual pathway so that music might be seen and sights such as colors may be heard. This crossover of sensations is referred to as synesthesia. An illusion is a, is a mistaken perception of an external stimuli. LSD and most psychedelics cause illusions. A delusion is a mistaken idea or belief that cannot be swayed by reason or other contradictory evidence. LSD and most psychedelics cause delusions. A, a hallucination is a sensory experience that does not come from external stimuli, but is perceived as coming from an external stimuli. Mescaline, psilocybin, and PCP cause hallucinations. LSD, psilocybin, mushrooms, ibogaine, uh, morning glory seeds, uh, dimethyltryptamine, uh, foxy, AMT, and ayahuasca are the indole psychedel psychedelics. These substances create mental interaction by inhibiting the serotonin receptor sites, especially the 5-H T2A sites. This affects sleep, mood, anxiety level, and it can uh, form hallucinations and illusions. 
LSD, uh, uh, lysergic acid diethylamide, also known as sacrament, acid, blotter, barrels, orange sunshine, illusion, and window panes, uh, is the semi-synthetic uh, chemical compound fa found in the air gut fungus, found in some cereal grains, but especially in rye. This substance was first isolated from the air gut uh, fungus in 1938, and it was synthesized. LSD failed as a psychological enhancement substance in psychotherapy and as a treatment for alcoholism. It has made a comeback out. <laughs> Excuse me, however. It was purchased by the CIA and experimented with for its use as a truth uh, drug or a mind control drug in a program referred to as MK Ultra. It failed. One of the CIA's researchers was Harvard professor Timothy Leary. Leary discovered its psychedelic properties by accident and then experimented on purpose. It was Leary who gave LSD to the rest of the world. LSD was made illegal in 1966. LSD is easily manufactured, though it has mostly come from the San Francisco Bay Area of Northern California. It takes a very small amount of LSD to produce a reaction. The entire U.S. uses less than 11 pounds of LSD a year. The chemical is usually dissolved in alcohol and placed on blotter paper for consumption. Uh, 10 to 50 milligrams are the usual dosage on the blotter paper. The popularity of LSD was, has waxed and waned. It was popular in the 1960s and 1970s as hippie drug, uh, drugs to get in touch. Uh, the drug became less popular in the 1980s, but made a comeback as a rave drug or supplement to ecstasy in the 1990s. A drug raid in Kansas virtually took the drug off the streets and made it too expensive for ravers to afford. Its popularity today is the same rave uh, crowd for people who want to experience a high. LSD is used in such small amounts that it is not normally detected by standard drug testing. LSD is remarkably potent, creating a reaction with 25 per one millionth of a, of a gram. Uh, 25 one millionths of a gram. Uh, spaciness, uh, decreased perception of time, mild euphoria. The effects appear 15 to 60 minutes after ingestion. The effects peak at two to four hours. The effects will, may last for six to eight hours. The user uh, returns to their normal state after 10 to tw 12 hours. Withdrawal from LSD is more a mental state than a physical dependence. They may experience a downer. And here are the probabilities of uh, lethality. And as you can see, the pro possibility of uh, lethality from uh, marijuana, LSD, and psilocybin, almost impossible. Um, and then all the other drugs, of course, heroin is down here. Uh, five per 100,000 per, well, anyway. Heroin is the most dangerous. Nutmeg is the second most dangerous. Detour is the third. Detour is tied with GHB, isobutyl nitrate, and uh, there you go. Dextromethorphan, alcohol, uh, cocaine, MDMA. There you go. So, probability of, of overdosing on LSD is almost impossible. LSD effects include rise in blood pressure and heart rate. A rise in body temperature, dizziness, dilated pupils, sweating, after image light trails known as the trailing phenomena, and sensory distortions, seeing sounds, feeling smells, hearing colors, dreaminess, depersonalization, altered mood, impaired concentration, and motivation. LSD activates a locus ceruleus, which causes the release of extra amounts of norepinephrine. The extra norepinephrine enhances alertness, causing the illusion of heightened awareness and introspection. LSD trippers often will lose their ability to, to, to express themselves verbally. The greatest danger is the impaired reasoning that individuals displays and the loss of judgment. The user can suffer acute anxiety reactions to the LSD, known as bad trips. This is especially common for new users who aren't aware of the intensity of the euphoria or the possibility of panic that can uh, be induced by the drug. 
depersonalization, acute anxiety, paranoia, fear of loss of control, delusions of persecution, feelings of grandeur. Suicide by mistake is not uncommon with LSD. LSD can be dangerous for people with pre-existing mental conditions or mental instability. Using LSD can aggravate their already existing conditions, leading to more severe mental disturbances. Use of LSD has also led to experiencing their mental illness at a younger age. LSD can lead to relapse for an individual recovering from a psychotic episode or, danger, uh, or major depression. Individuals without mental illnesses might be thrown into temporary but prolonged psychotic reactions or severe depression that requires treatment. Some individuals have been known to experience prolonged trips that can be emotionally crippling and last for years. Hallucinogen Persisting Perception Disorder, HPPD, is re-experiencing mental flashbacks or sensations from a, from a previous trip. It is usually from a bad trip. HPPD can occur months or even years after the last use of LSD. The flashbacks recreate the original experience and can be triggered by stress, use of another psychoactive substance, or exercise. HPPD seems to have a strong hereditary component and results in anxiety and panic. Some people suffer from long-term intermittent or continuous HPPD where their flashbacks occur on a chronic basis. This type of HPPD may resolve itself in five years or persist indefinitely resulting in difficulty reading, memory problems, color confusion, halos around objects, visual afterimages or trails, uh, intensified colors, macropsia or microbsia, uh, objects appearing abnormally large or abnormally small, illusions of movement, geometric pseudo-hallucinations, flashes of color, imaged, uh, imagined images, and floaters in your eyes. HPBD uh, can be caused by other psychedelics besides LSD, though it is most common with LSD. It can also be caused by MDMA, MDA, mescaline, uh, DMT, PCP, marijuana, and psilocybin. Flashbacks occur in from 23 to 64% of regular LSD users. Zoloft, clonidine, and naltrexone have been used to treat HPPD successfully. LSD does not produce compulsive drug seeking behavior, thus it is not considered addictive. Tolerance develops rapidly and some users have reported as many as 500 trips in their lifetime. The dependence is probably psychological instead of physical. There are 75 different varieties of mushrooms that contain the active ingredient psilocybin and psilocin. They grow in Mexico, the United States, South America, Southeast Asia, and Europe and have been used since before recorded history. They were especially important in the Aztec and Toltec religions in Mexico and Central America. Those substances are still being used among Mazatec, Kal, Lacondon, Mayan shamans. Uh, and when uh, we were in uh, <laughs> when, when we were in Guatemala, driving around Guatemala, they were they were uh, shamans that we ran into in one of the small villages, and uh, they were Lacondon. Uh, Mayan shamans, and uh, there was one of our party that wanted to uh, to go with them uh, to experience the uh, the uh, the magic mushrooms, but uh, of course uh, that didn't happen. <clears throat> that would have been a mess. <laughs> Uh, the chemical structure of psilocybin is very similar to LSD. However, mushrooms uh, vary widely in, in strength with some... That was in 2003, by the way. Uh, however, mushrooms vary widely in strength with some having as much as 10 times the level of psilocybin as weak ones. Fresh mushrooms are more potent than dried ones. Uh, psilocybin is uh, broken down into psilocin in the stomach. Uh, psilocybin is twice as potent as psilocin and crosses the brain-blood barrier more readily. Psychic uh, effects begin at dosages of 30 to 60 milligrams. The effects last for three to six hours, and the effects are nausea and other physical responses before the psychedelic effects begin. 
altered states of consciousness, changes in sight, hearing, taste, and touch, uh, visceral effects, uh, less dissociation and panic than with uh, LSD. Vomiting is very common um, before the uh, uh, illusions and hallucinations begin. Many of the psychedelic effects are caused by the disruption of neurotransmitters. Dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine oversensitizes the senses. Some people try to harvest their own magic mushrooms, but the similarity between mushrooms that contain psilocybin and those that are poisonous make picking them too dangerous. And I have seen, uh, in the emergency rooms, I've seen people poisoned by poisonous mushrooms. Not a real good idea. It causes a lot of vomiting, uh, and it can kill you. These are some really deadly mushrooms, so you got to be really careful. Ibogaine uh, comes from African shrub Tabernanthi iboga. Uh, at low doses, the substance acts as a stimulant. At higher doses, the substance produces a long-acting psychedelic-like catatonic reaction that can last up to two days. Ibogaine is used by the witty... Uh, uh, tribe of Gamal, uh, to uh, remain motionless while hunting. The Woody tribe are, are uh, 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 well, they're pygmies. They're small people. These hunters also claim to have ancestral visions while under the, the drug spell. Uh, this drug has been considered as a treatment for heroin, alcohol, and cocaine addiction as it reduces withdrawal symptoms. However, neurotoxicity has been observed with its use in this capacity, so it's kind of dangerous. Morning glory seeds, a little uh, alaloquy, uh, contain lysergic acid amide, which can be used to make lysergic acid diethylamide. Lysergic acid amide has one tenth the potency of LSD. It requires several hundred morning glory seeds to get an effect, and this usually causes a great deal of nausea. To exacerbate this effect, the seeds that are sold commercially are dipped in a toxin that induces vomiting. The effects of morning glory seeds include sensory disturbances and mood changes, nausea and vomiting, of course, drowsiness, headache, and chills. Uh, dimethyltryptamine, DMT, was first synthesized in 1931 and is found in several South American trees, vines, shrubs, and mushrooms. The psychedelic substance in DMT is similar in structure to psilocin and is usually smoked, snorted, or injected as it is deactivated by stomach acids and causes visual hallucinations, loss of awareness of the individual's surroundings. The high uh, lasts for 10 to 60 minutes. Uh, a similar response comes from the venom of the Sonoran Desert Toad. Uh, Foxy and AMT are two psychedelic tryptamines. Uh, these drugs aren't very popular, but have been found at raves in Arizona, California, Florida, and New York. The effects of the tryptamines are similar to other rave drugs. Euphoria, empathy, visual and auditory uh, disturbances, formication, uh, which is the itching that you get uh, when your, uh, when your hair, hair follicles st stick straight up, uh, paranoia. It feels like bugs are crawling all over you. Uh, paranoia, emotional distress. It's formication that uh, if you've ever been around somebody that was using crystal meth, uh, that's what that's the reason they're scratching all the time. It's because of this formication. Uh, I've seen people digging holes in their faces with uh, uh, with the itching. Uh, paranoia, emotional distress, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea. Uh, the effects from small doses will last uh, three to six hours, and heavier doses, 12 to 24 hours. Ayahuasca, or also known as Yage, is a uh, psychedelic drink made from the bark, leaves, and vines of the Banisteriopsis species of the Amazon jungle. This drink causes intense vomiting and diarrhea before it deposits the drinker in a dreamlike state for about 10 hours. Select tribes of natives in Peru, Brazil, and Ecuador use the drug for divination, prophecy, sorcery, and medicinal purposes. Cults have sprung up in Brazil around the use of this substance. The active ingredient is indole alkaloid harmaline. 
Phenylalkylamine uh, psychedelics, uh, this group of psychedelics are related to, to adrenaline and um, uh, amphetamines, though their effects tend to last longer. The best known phenylalkylamine uh, psychedelics is peyote or mescaline. Mescaline is the active ingredient in the peyote cactus and the San Pedro cactus. The use of these cacti for religious insight and rituals dates back four to 5,000 years among the native tribes of Mexico, Central, and South America. In North America, 50 tribal groups were still using the drug for religious purposes into the 20th century. In 1996, the Supreme Court ruled that peyote usage by the Native American Church or North America, of North America was protected by the Constitution. Mescaline is found in the uh, small gray-green uh, crowns of the peyote cacti. Uh, they can be uh, used uh, dried or, uh, or fresh. The buttons can either be eaten or boiled in a tea. Um, the mescaline is bitter and nauseating and may take as many as seven to eight buttons to elicit a response. The effects last up to 12 hours and results in the colorful visions and, in colorful visions and hallucinations. MDA and MDMA, ecstasy, the rave drugs, are, were first synthesized in 1910. These drugs have a similar chemical structure to mescaline. Uh, these drugs uh, produce the effects, uh, feelings of well-being, euphoria, and psychedelic stimulation effects. MDA was popular as the love drug in the 1960s and 1970s, as it was supposed to increase the libido. It was later found to destroy serotonin-producing neurons in the brain, along with a few overdose deaths made it less popular. MDMA or ecstasy was developed to produce the same effects as MDA, but with fewer side effects. MDMA lasts for 4 to 6 hours compared to the 10 to 12 hours of MDA. It is popular as a rave drug as it is reputed to make the individual dance and interact with the other people at the party. The drug was tested for its psychological impact by the U.S. Army in the 1950s, but instead was touted as a drug that would help therapists tap into the emotions and memories of repressed patients. It was used in this capacity in the late 70s and early 80s, the drug was found to create empathy in the user. Street vendors changed the emotion uh, empathy to ecstasy to improve sales. People taking MDMA experience intensi intensified uh, senses of smell, which makes uh, the use of strong smelling substances like, Vic like Vicks inhalers and uh, Tiger Balm popular at raves. Glow sticks are waved in front of ecstasy users to create a mesmerizing effect. MDMA tablets uh, co cost pirate manufacturers from f uh, 50 uh, cents to a dollar to make, but sell for as much as 10 to 70 dollars, depending on the market. DEA reports that 30 to 50 percent of MDMA sold isn't MDMA at all. Surprise. The effects of MDMA are similar to amphetamines that begin to appear about 30 minutes after ingestion. Increased heart rate and respiration, uh, excess uh, energy, fainting, sweating, chills, hyperactivity, tightening of muscles, especially jaw muscles, and clenching of the teeth. Baby pacifiers and lollipops are often used to prevent tooth damage. Infre infrequent use uh, leads to heightened responses. Heavier use leads to rapid tolerance. Uh, so if you're watching a movie and you see somebody with a baby pacifier hung around their neck, they're theoretically they're using MDMA. Overuse of, M overuse of MDMA may result in dehydration that may uh, result in water toxicity and electrolyte imbalance, pupil dilation, blurred vision and eyelid twitching, headaches, agitation, nausea, and anorexia, uh, serotonergic uh, axon apoptosis uh, resulting in thought and memory impairment, rapid and potentially dangerous heart rhythm problems, seizure activity, stroke, cardiovascular failure and coma, malignant hyperthermia that can result in muscle damage, renal failure, and even blood coagulation. 20 to 60 minutes after ingesting MDMA and lasting for three to four more hours, the drug changes the feelings of the user 
feelings of happiness, clarity, peace, pleasure, altered sensory uh, perceptions without depersonalization or detachment from the environment, non-sexual empathy for others, self-awareness, heightened self-esteem, open-mindedness, acceptance, and intimacy. MDMA's psychic uh, effects are probably produced by its overstimulation of the serotonergic producing neuron in the brain. They're neurons, not neuron, not one. MDMA forces the discharge of the reservoir of serotonin in the synaptic cleft. Uh, if more MDMA is taken when the effects be begin to wear off, the response is a reduced reaction. Serotonin receptors may retreat into the cell membranes to avoid damage, downregulation. It may take up to a week to regenerate enough serotonin to produce the same effect. After use, MDMA users may experience extreme depression and suicidal thoughts. Because of the downregulation of serotonin receptors, tolerance to the drug is fairly rapid. Because of the questionable content of tablets said to be MDMA, polydrug use is common. LSD is taken with MDMA to increase the time the MDMA effects last. This is known as candy flipping, flip-flopping, XNLs, and candy snaps. MDMA with hydrocodone, oxycontin, codeine, heroin can, be, can enhance the euphoric effects of both drugs. GHB with MDMA, a form of modern-day speedballing. Uh, nitrous oxide and MDMA intensifies the inhalant rush. <clears throat> Prozac and MDMA are used to, to, uh, together uh, to buffer the serotonergic uh, cells from toxicity. MDMA and Viagra is uh, taken together to enhance sexuality and is re referred to as sextasy. Of course, that only works for males. certainly doesn't work for females. MDMA has been maintained because of its popularity with people who attend raves, dance parties, and the electronic dance clubs. Rave and, and club music is also known as techno and maintains a trance-like beat that may be accompanied by light shows and laser light effects. These events are usually accompanied with the use of many illegal drugs that includes MDMA, nitrous oxide, GHB or GBL, dextromethorphan, ketamine, PCP, Nexus, and any street drugs other than alcohol. Problems at raves usually come from other drug use, alcohol, methamphetamine, LSD, GHB, or ketamine. Uh, MDMA effects that can cause problems are usually in the form of overheating, uh, falling injuries, passing out, bad psychedelic experiences, and mental destabilization. Two drugs that are popular as rave drugs uh, in the Netherlands are 2CT7 and 2CT2, also known as Blue Mystic, Tripstasy, Seventh Heaven, Seven Up, Lucky Seven, and Beautiful. Uh, the drugs are psychostimulants and cause the following effects. They induce delirium, heightened sensitivity, increased awareness, nausea and vomiting, of course, dangerous cardiovascular responses. Nexus is a trade name for 2CB or 4-bromo-2, 5-dimethoxyphenylalthalamine. Uh, it creates mild stimulation at low doses and intense psychedelic experiences at high doses. This is an amphetamine-like chemical, Nexus. STP is the street name for, for that substance and is also known as DOM. Uh, serenity, tranquility, and peace. It is similar to MDMA, I'm sorry, sorry MDA, as it produces a 12-hour in, uh, intoxication that results in intense stimulation, mild psych, uh, psychedelic reactions, and it is it is notorious. STP is notorious for for producing bad trips. PMA or 4MA is the street name for paramethoxyamphetamine. Uh, its uh, stimulant effects only last an hour and leaves the user with a sudden rise in blood pressure, distinct after images, pins and needles tingly feeling like a chill or a person's hair standing on end, seizures, uh, hyperthermia, coagulation of blood, and muscle damage. Bromo Dragonfly is also known as Bee Fly or Fly. 
It is a powerful hallucinogen that has, uh, has a longer duration than any other hallucinogen, sometimes lasting for days. It produces hallucinations, delusions, and memory loss. Anticholinergic uh, psychedelics, um, belladonna is a small plant found throughout the world that has been used for eons by women wanting to make their eyes more striking. It dilates your, pup uh, your pupils. Belladonna is Italian for beautiful woman. Belladonna blocks acetylcholine receptors in the central nervous system to produce delirium, inability to focus the eyes, tachycardia, intense thirst, hyperthermia and the point of death, uh, hallucinations, separation from reality, uh, sleep for up to 48 hours. Jimson weed is a psychedelic plant found throughout the United States where its seeds are eaten, brewed in a, into a tea, or the leaves are made into cigarettes, and it is also known as thorn apple, angel's trumpet, uh, Jamestown weed, uh, mad apple, moonflower, and stinkweed. Uh, the substance produces the following effects, jerky movements, tachycardia, hypotension, hallucinations of snakes, spiders, and lizards. This stuff grows everywhere. I've seen it uh, on the uh, over by Sali. Uh, we have it here in uh, in Iowa. Uh, I can remember it from uh, uh, from Indiana. Every place I've been, I've seen Jimson weed. It's just a weed, and it's not a pretty one. That's what it looks like. Also known as thorn apple. That's what I I found. I, that's what I called it, thorn apple. That's what it looks like. Ketamine is an anesthetic. You probably find it just about everywhere. It even it grows to the desert. It grows where there is a lot of water. It grows everywhere. It's all over the place. Ketamine is an anesthetic uh, used with both humans and animals and is, clo is a close chemical relative of PCP, though ketamine is shorter lived uh, than PCP. Ketamine was the most widely used anesthetic during the Vietnam War. Vietnam War. It was liked because it does not affect the patient's breathing, but has the additional side effects of dissociation, feeling like you are outside yourself. The liquid is crystallized and the crystals are smoked in a pipe or snorted to the effects of mild dreamlike intoxication, sensation of mind-body uh, separation, dizziness, free-floating giddiness, slurred speech, impaired muscular coordination. And there, uh, that's what it looked like in Vietnam. <laughs> I can remember those scrubs. They were all the same color. They were all that color. <laughs> we had a bunch of scrubs. Uh, anyway, yeah. They're always that color. As amazing as that is. Uh, heavy doses of ketamine produce the psychedelic experience known as being in a K-hole, uh, where the individual feels as if they are having an out-of-body, near-death experience of depersonalization hallucination, delirium, bizarre or mystic exper mystical experiences. Uh, they can feel no pain, respiratory depression, increased heart rate and blood pressure, combative or belligerent behavior, convulsions, and, but rarely coma. That's one of the reasons it was used so frequently in Vietnam. Phenocyclidine hydrochloride, also known as PCP, was developed in the 1950s as a general anesthetic for humans. Unfortunately, the drug had toxic and hallucinogenic side effects, and it was re relegated to use with animals only. It is also known as angel dust, peeps, KJ, Sherman's, or ozone. It is sometimes sprinkled on marijuana and smoked in a joint. It can be smoked, snorted, swallowed, or injected. PCP seems to disconnect sensory messages uh, sent to the uh, central nervous system, it, dissolving inhibitions, uh, deadening pain, strange feeling of mind-body separation, forgetfulness, difficulty uh, concentrating, aggressive and violent behavior, depersonalization. 40% of report hallucinate. 40% will report hallucinations, tactile, visual, or auditory. Uh, damage can be done by the individual to themselves by overstressing muscles, sinews, and flesh. Low doses of PCP produce mild depression and then stimulation and last for one to two hours. Moderate doses of PCP produce an intense sensory deprived state and last for four to six hours. Heavy doses of PCP produce catatonia. 
coma, convulsions, and kidney failure and can last for up to 48 hours. The general, general drug-using population does not routinely use PCP because of the high frequency of bad trips. Anterograde and retrograde amnesia is common with the use of PCP. Salvia divinorum is a member of the mint family and produces psychedelic effects when ingested. It creates dreamlike hallucinations, occasional delirium, and out-of-body sensations. When smoked, the effects last for only 7 to 10 minutes. The key ingredient is salvorin. Uh, at uh, present, the drug is legal, but under review for scheduling. And that's what it looks like. Little blue flowers, little purple flowers. We actually have this growing in my garden. Amanita mushrooms uh, have been used for rituals as far back as Neanderthal man. The mushroom causes dreamy intoxication, hallucinations, delirious excitement. Physical toxic effects can be deadly. The effects start 30 minutes after ingestion and last for 4 to 8 hours. Active ingredients resemble the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA. Uh, too much of the mushroom will make the user sick as if they have food poisoning. That's always fun. That's what they look like, Amanita mushrooms. Dextromethorphan is the active ingredient in many cough syrups, including Robitussin DM, uh, Coracidin, and Romilar. Uh, 10 to 15 times the recommended doses can give the user euphoria, mind-body separation, auditory and visual hallucinations, uh, loss of coordination, dilate pupils, decrease orgasm, uh, nausea and upset stomach, itching rashes, fever, tachycardia, uh, acute anxiety, and panic reactions. And that's what it looks like. Robitussin DM. They all have dextromethorphan. Knock you right out. Nutmeg and mace come from the nutmeg tree. Uh, in heavy doses, they can cause mild floating sensations to full-blown delirium. Such heavy doses do have some price, uh, have their price, uh, causes a bad hangover and a severely upset stomach. Uh, this combination is rarely used outside of prisons where other psychedelics are unavailable. Mace is a protective layer around the nutmeg nut. That's the mace, and that's what's going on here with this. There you go. Marijuana, cannabis, or hemp plants are used to make powerfully strong fibers for rope, edible seeds, oil that can be used as a fuel or lubricant. Medicinal, uh, it's also used for medicinal substances. It has medicinal substances in it. It is illegal in most countries around the world. Cannabis is a plant that was developed in China and spread throughout the world for its medicinal properties and powerful fibers. Cannabis appears in writings from ancient China and India. In India, it appears in the Vedas as a divine nectar. Cannabis in the form of hemp was brought to the United States before the revolution to uh, grow for the ships of the Royal Navy. George Washington worked to expand his holdings to grow more and more hemp for profit. Hemp wasn't used for its psychoactive uh, effects until after World War I, when migrant workers from Mexico introduced smoking the wacky weed to other poor immigrant minority groups. The psychoactive properties of marijuana became popular during, during Prohibition when the still legal pot was smoked for its psychoactive effects by those who sought a new high. In 1937, marijuana was declared illegal. Hemp was legally grown during, the, during World War II, and the government even experimented with cannabis extracts to produce a truth drug. Hemp is legally grown in France, Italy, and Yugoslavian countries, England, and Canada uh, to make paper, textiles, and rope. Marijuana is legally used in the Netherlands in coffee shops. 160 million people worldwide use some form of marijuana. Going into the 1960s, only 2% of people in the United States had tried an illegal drug. However, the counterculture movement in the United States that grew out of the civil rights and anti-war movements of the Vietnam era increased drug experimentation exponentially. By 1979, 68 million Americans had tried marijuana and 23 million used it on a monthly basis. 
Attempted control of the substance waxed and waned over the years, but a resurgence of marijuana prohibition in the 1990s led to a marked drop in its usage. By 1992, just over 7 million people reported using marijuana on a monthly basis. By 2005, the number of monthly users had doubled. In 2005, 3,200,000 people used marijuana on a daily basis. Every year, 80,000 emergency room visits occur because of marijuana usage. 44% of male adult arrestees test positive for marijuana. 32% of female adult arrestees test positive for marijuana. 57% of juvenile male arrestees test positive for marijuana. And 32% of juvenile female arrestees test positive for the substance. The plant grows to make fiber uh, is low in psychoactive. The plant that is grown to, to make fiber, the, the hemp, uh, is low in psychoactive substances and is referred to as hemp. The plants grown to produce psychoactive resins are referred to as marijuana and are low in fibrous structure. And this is the difference between uh, marijuana grown for uh, to for uh, as a hallucinogen and that grown for fiber. This is what the fiber looks like. As you can see, it's a tall plant, and this is a relatively short plant. Uh, there you go. There's, there it is again. And you can see how involved the uh, marijuana plant is compared to hemp. Street names for marijuana include Pot, Muggles, 420, Mary Jane, Griffa, Mud, Herb, Chronic, Dank, uh, African Black, Panama Red, Acapulco Gold, these are three different types of marijuana. Uh, grass, leaf, ganja, charas, uh, sins, uh, weed, dope, dubage, uh, dekind, Maui Waui, another uh, type of marijuana. Humboldt Green uh, is from Humboldt County in uh, California. BC Bud is another type, and Buddha Thai. These are all, all the bottom ones are different types of marijuana different forms. Marijuana comes in three distinct species, but hundreds of hybrids. Cannabis sativa is the most common species. It's grown in tropical, subtropical, and temperate regions. It grows 5 to 20 feet tall. A plant grows from uh, 1 to 5 pounds of buds and smokable leaves. Cannabis indica grows in Southeast Asia. It's a shorter and bushier plant and is generally stronger smelling. It is usually grown to produce hashish. Cannabis ruderalis uh, is a thin, small plant. It has very little THC. Most marijuana is grown using the Cincinnati growing system, where male and female plants are separated before pollination can occur. By removing the plants before pollination can take place, the plants produce no seeds and the THC is stronger. This method is used with both the cannabis sativa and indica plant. And if you watch uh, movies and they're talking about marijuana, a lot of times they say there's too many seeds. Well, what they're talking about is the more seeds there are, the, the uh, weaker the THC. Dried marijuana leaves, buds, and flowers are crushed and rolled into cigarettes known as joints. Marijuana can be smoked in pipes. Uh, in, in India, marijuana is divided into three different strengths and depending on the part of the plant smoked. Bong has the lowest potency and uses the stems and leaves. Ganja is stronger and is from the stronger leaves and flowering tops. Charas is the concentrated resin and is mo the most po potent. And that's what a marijuana joint looks like. Well, joint or blunt. And that's what ganja looks like. And that's what charas looks like. Looks like Looks like rat turds, doesn't it? Depending on the region of the country, only 10 to 50 percent of marijuana consumed in the United States is homegrown. Most of the marijuana being smoked is smuggled in from Mexico and is either grown in Mexico or Colombia. In the United States, inventive growers have gone to more and more creative ways of producing their product, from growing fields of the plant in the wilderness back areas of national forests to growing plants in grow houses using grow lights and hydroponics. The typical marijuana plant contains over 420 chemicals. 30 of them have been found to be psychoactive. The most potent chemical is delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, 
When ingested, the and that's the THC comes from the tetrahydrocannabinol. Uh, when ingested, the psychoactive uh, chemicals in the marijuana are converted by the liver into 60 other metabolites some of which are psychoactive as well. Only about 20% of the THC in the joint is retained by the body, but the longer the smoke is held in the lungs, the more THC that is absorbed and the stronger the high. Modern marijuana contains as much as 4-25% to THC as compared to the 60s average of 1-3%. to Most of the research from the past is based on the weaker marijuana. Much to researchers' surprise, marijuana has its own receptors in the brain. Or at least that's what researchers thought when they discovered new receptors in the brain when doing marijuana research in the 1990s. Hence the name endogenous uh, cannabinoid neurotransmitters, or CBs. The first endogenous neurotransmitter that was found to occupy the cannabinoid receptors was anandamide. CB1 receptors are found mostly in the brain, in the hippocampus, that's your memory area, amygdala, which is your emotional area, uh, basal ganglia, including the nucleus accumbens, which is your, uh, the part that makes you feel good, and your cerebellum, which has to do with movement. CB2 receptors are found mostly in the immune system and the lower body, and this is one of the reasons why smoking marijuana lowers your immune response. CB1 receptors are, are in areas that integrate sensory experiences with emotions, controls your learning, controls your memory, controls a sense of novelty, and controls motor coordination. Opioids and cocaine overdoses uh, are dangerous because they suppress the heart rate and respiratory functions of the brainstem. At the same time, it is almost impossible to overdose with marijuana because the anandamide receptors that it utilizes merely increase or decrease our minds to sensory inputs. Marijuana is a vasodilator and so causes bloodshot uh, eyes when it is used. This often leads to conjunctivitis. It also causes physical relaxation or sedation, some pain control, coughing from lung irritation, an increase in appetite, small to moderate loss of muscle coordination, increased heart rate, decreased blood pressure, decreased eye pressure, decreased nausea, decreased ability to track movement, and after image of a moving object. We were playing in a, uh, in a co-ed tournament, and it was an all-night tournament in uh, Montana, and we were playing against this team that had beaten us before, so that was we were in the knockout round, and we played them like at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well... They had smoked pot. <laughs> they had smoked pot. And uh, so as we started, they were really good. I mean, these these these, uh, these guys were pretty good. And anyway, as we started playing, they couldn't catch the ball. I, it was terrible. And they were just chasing the ball all over the place. But they had smoked pot. And it was really stupid and it was really dangerous. We had to stop the game finally because... Uh, uh, the, a lady had been hit in the face, and then another lady had gotten uh, hit in the in the stomach, and uh, and they were out of the game. They didn't have anybody to replace the, their females on their team, so they 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 forfeited, even though they had kicked our butts before. Uh, it was funny because uh, uh, we we batted in the first inning and we scored like 12 runs and then they batted and they couldn't even hit the ball. They couldn't even find the ball. And they laughed. They thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And then the second inning, of course, we just about killed them, uh, killed them. Men were having just as much trouble as the women, but they, they weren't getting hit and, and hurt as much. Marijuana causes a small temporary disruption of the male hormone testosterone. While this is of little importance to most males, for those with a hormone imbalance or those going through puberty, it can cause some problems. The testosterone decrease can also cause a lowered sperm count and sperm motility in chronic pot users, making it less likely that they will be able to reproduce. Marijuana makes people hungry, called uh, the munchies, when THC occupies the CB1 receptors in the hypothalamus that indicates satiation. Marijuana doesn't sharpen an individual's sense of taste, it just makes them hungry. Marijuana also gives the individual a feeling of confusion about where they are and eventually makes them feel deja vu along with drowsy, aloof, and difficulty concentrating. 
With the advent of marijuana high in THC, these varieties have more extreme effects. Uh, giddiness, increases, increased alertness to the point of hypervigilance, major distortions of time, major distortions of color, major distortions of sound, sensation of movement under the user's feet, visual illusions, hallucinations, paranoia, and depersonalization. Marijuana users tend to act more em empathic uh, to other feelings when under the influence of the drug. Marijuana also makes the user more suggestible. Uh, the main organ in the brain that is affected by marijuana is the amygdala, which regulates appetite, pain, anxiety, fear, suppression of painful memories, and a sense of novelty. When an individual uses marijuana, the THC artificially stimulates the amygdala, making even the most mundane objects and ideas interesting. If the individual overstimulates the CB1 receptors, these cells will downregulate, sometimes reducing these receptors by 70%. When the individual is stoned, this reduction of CB1 receptors will result in the loss of novelty. Even the most novel stimuli will be boring to them. For a marijuana smoker to continue working, studying, or even maintaining a relationship when not stoned takes a great deal of desire. Thus, the individual will be more likely to continue to use to combat the perpetual boredom they experience when they aren't stoned. Receptor recovery can take from two, to week, from two weeks for moderate smokers to up to six weeks or longer for heavy smokers. And this is one of the things that you need to think about. People that smoke a lot of pot, they seem to be bored all the time, and, and uh, they have to smoke marijuana just to feel not bored. And that's the big basic problem. So if you've ever been around somebody that was a chronic marijuana smoker, when they weren't smoking pot, they, you, couldn't, you couldn't get them to do anything because everything's boring or everything's just too dull for them to want to do. They can't even play video games when they're, uh, when they're not smoking pot. Short-term memory is held in the hippocampus for immediate use. Uh, if this information is needed, it will be held until it can be transferred to the long-term memory. And andamide receptors in the hip, hippocampus dictate how much memory is available for immediate use. Because THC occupies anandamide receptor sites, it limits the amount of hippocampal short-term memory. The user may lose significant chunks of their lives while using because of the memory impairment caused by the THC. Marijuana slows learning and disrupts short-term memory, but doesn't affect long-term memory, though it does disrupt memory in general, attention span, and cognitive functioning. Oddly, users may feel that they are thinking deeper even though they're not thinking hardly at all. When the brain is developing, there is an explosion of the connections and synapses among the nerve cells in the frontal lobes around age 12. A great deal of pruning of these connections and synapses will take place through the next 10 to 12 years. Depending on the use, uh, unused connections will be broken and discarded. Heavy marijuana usage dealing, uh, during this time frame will change the brain structure because of the distorting effects of marijuana, the individual may develop an impaired ability to determine danger, to organize, and to prioritize. Marijuana and MDMA use, uh, use is especially destructive for memory. Marijuana tends to give their user a distorted sense of time. This is known as temporal uh, dis, uh, disintegration. Uh, while this effects may help with dull, repetitive jobs, for more complex jobs like studying, the individual may become easily bored and quit. Tem uh, temporal dis disintegration is part of the most debilitating aspects of using marijuana, along with impaired judgment and short-term memory loss. Multiple and interactive tasks can be impossible for these individuals. Distortion of time, impaired judgment, and short-term memory loss will be evident in individuals' behavior for up to seven days after use. By 28 days, the individual has returned to what passes for normal with these individuals. Research into the effects of smoking marijuana on the respiratory system indicates that smoking four or five joints is as destructive on the mucous membranes and the lungs as smoking a pack of cigarettes. This is because marijuana is regulated as to its growth and refinement and is rarely filtered. Chronic use of marijuana can lead to chronic coughing and bronchitis. The most damage is done to those individuals who smoke both marijuana and cigarettes. Marijuana smokers have increased mucus secreting epithelial cells, but decreased cilia to expel the excess mucus. 
For those who smoke both cigarettes and joints, they lose all the cilia on their mucous membranes, meaning that they will have to cough to expel the mucus. While researchers have found that there is no link between marijuana and lung cancer, they have also discovered that marijuana suppresses the anti-tumor immune response, leading to a greater probability of developing tumors, including breast tumors. Marijuana has also been found to increase uh, re replication of HIV, accelerating uh, its progress because of its capacity to suppress the immune system. Users tend to be more susceptible to colds, flu, and other viral infections. The immunocompromised are not advised to use marijuana. Marijuana routinely increases select mental problems, paranoia, anxiety, and depression. If a person is on the edge of uh, the confusion and depersonalization of THC, will very often tip the scales in a negative direction. Individuals who maintain a paranoid mindset while smoking marijuana might have exacerbated reactions with stronger blends or other drug mix mixtures. Tolerance to marijuana occurs very rapidly. Often new smokers will experience inverse tolerance where they actually become more sensitive to the marijuana and have heightened sensations with less smoking. Marijuana's effects last for, uh, for from four to six hours, but the substance may be detectable for up to 28 days and actually will stay in the body for up to three months. Because of the length of time it takes to rid the body of the substance, withdrawal from marijuana doesn't start until a longer period after abstinence. Research has disclosed that despite the rumor to the contrary, marijuana smokers do go through withdrawals, though they are more delayed than, uh, than with other drugs, and like other drugs, not everyone will go through all the withdrawal symptoms. Everyone will have craving, other symptoms include anger, irritability, anxiety, and or aggression, aches, pains, and chills, depression, inability to concentrate, slight tremors, sleep disturbances, decreased appetite, and stomach pain, uh, sweating. Now, one of the things that you, you really need to remember is that, <clears throat> that this starts a, a, a longer, like it, you know, you start stop drinking alcohol, you start having withdrawal symptoms after a couple days. It's the same way with heroin. It's the same way with, uh, with uh, uh, the amphetamines. Uh, but with marijuana, it may be a week before you start having these problems. And of course, the longer it's been since you've smoked pot, the more, the more uh, extreme these, uh, these symptoms are, the withdrawal symptoms. Unlike most other drugs, marijuana has a stronger psychological addiction than physical addiction. Marijuana has just as strong chronic and compulsive use as any other drug. Unfortunately, marijuana's reputation is that it is non-addicting, leading people into illegal usage and destructive circumstances with the idea that because it is less addictive, the, the behavior is all right. Adolescents are very sensitive to peer pressure. People who smoke marijuana tend to hang around other people who smoke marijuana. Because this crowd has a more rebellious nature than, say, the chess club, drugs tended to be uh, around for the cool people to try. In this way, tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana are gateway drugs to heavier drug use. People who develop a pattern of use at an early age restructure brain cells toward uh, continued addictive use. Tolerance of less serious drugs may lead to a desire to re, uh, refine that high. Uh, researchers have found that almost everyone in treatment programs have started with the big three. Where marijuana use by 17 uh, gives a 2.7 to 5.2 greater chance of heavier use. Marijuana is the most widely used illicit drug in the world and is the drug of choice in many countries. Uh, this includes Australia, Canada, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Mexico, Panama, and South Africa. In the United States, penalties for possession and use vary from state to state. In 2004, 44.2% of the arrests for drugs were for, for marijuana. 90% uh, of these arrests were for possession alone. Marijuana arrests almost doubled from 1980 to 2004. And now, of course, all but 20 states are, um, marijuana is legal in all but 20 states in the United States. 
Other countries punished for marijuana, Austria, Belgium, Germany, Greece, Ireland, Italy, and Spain don't prosecute for small amounts uh, for personal use. In England, possession of marijuana could lead to a five-year prison term, though most sentences are minimal. In the Netherlands, marijuana use is limited to the coffee shops. Sales outside uh, the system are illegal. Some countries have the death penalty for the possession of hard drugs, Algeria, Indonesia, Iran, Malaysia, Singapore, Turkey, and Thailand. Other countries punished for marijuana. In Japan, possession is illegal, and people can go to jail for having less than an ounce of marijuana. Smugglers with larger amounts of marijuana will routinely be imprisoned for three to four years. Foreigners who are caught are deported after they serve out their sentence. These individuals will often be banned from reentering Japan for life. Paul McCartney has a lifetime ban for an incident in 1980. Cannot go to Japan. In India, an individual can be imprisoned for up to 10 years for smoking marijuana. Venezuela has a minimum 10-year prison sentence. People caught for reckless driving or after having an accident are frequently not uh, only tested for alcohol, but other drugs as well. In the case of marijuana, there are some circumstances that make the information erroneous. Marijuana stays in the system for weeks after it stops having a psychedelic effect on the individual. Elimination rates often vary by individual because of fat content. There is little accurate data about how much marijuana in the system causes impairment. There is often another drug in the system at the same time, especially alcohol. While the research is fairly, uh, is fairly uh, concrete when dealing with alcohol and impairment for marijuana is not so simple. Statistics dealing with marijuana and traffic problems often involve polydrug use. 65% of heavy smoker uh, drinkers you also use marijuana. People who drive under the influence of marijuana often are paranoid and drive too slowly for traffic. Research shows impaired driving for marijuana smokers up to eight hours after smoking and 60% failed 2.5 hours after smoking a moderate amount. A French study showed marijuana as a factor in 10% of traffic accidents. A U.S. study showed marijuana as a factor in 4 to 14% of injured injury or fatality accidents. Once upon a time, I was in the service, and uh, I was on call. I was a laboratory technician. I was on call, and they called me out. And I, I lived uh, in the back part of... Uh, base housing, so I had to drive all the way through base housing to get to the base, and it usually took about oh, three or four minutes to drive to the front gate because, you know, I was that close. Uh, so I got called out one time. This guy had diabetes, and, and we were called out. He'd had some kind of an accident, um, and so they called, they called me out, and I threw the kids in the car, and I took off, and, uh, well, take me off. <laughs> The speed limit in base housing is 20 miles per hour, so I wasn't really driving very fast. So taking off is not quite the right word. Anyway, so I, I pulled on to uh, uh, the main drag that goes right to the front gate. And uh, right in front of me, uh, the uh, uh, x-ray tech got called out at the same time. And so he pulled out in front of me. And here I am, I'm going, you know, the, the 20 miles an hour I'm supposed to be going. And I got behind him, and he's going like 10. And sometimes it's almost like he stops. I mean, it's crazy. And so I'm behind this guy, and, and of course, I need to draw his blood. I need to draw blood at the, at the hospital. And this guy, I could walk faster than, than this guy's driving. And so we finally get there, and uh, I went down, and I ran down there and got yelled at by the doctor because it took so long for me to, uh, to, to respond. Uh, to my call, to the call, uh, and so I drew, drew the guy's blood, and I started his, his uh, blood glucose level, and I went down, and I was talking to the x-ray tech, and I said, what's, what are you, are you high, what's going on, and I looked in his eyes, and his eyes were just bloodshot like crazy, he had been smoking pot, and, uh, uh, and, and it got really weird after that, because, uh, he thought I was going to turn him in for smoking pot, and of course, uh, I I didn't, I, and I wouldn't have, uh, you know, but uh, he, uh, it got it got real ugly. He uh, 
wrote he got a contract out on me to, to kill me I, it was just really weird i didn't turn him in or anything but uh, eventually all this um uh it, it all took care of itself but he was really mad at me for about six months i wasn't going to turn him in it's just nuts but boy i'll tell you it took me forever to get to to get to the base most drug urine tests uh, place the cutoff for marijuana use at 50 na uh, nanograms per milliliter. For long-term smokers of marijuana, this amount of drug could be found in their system as long as three weeks after the last use. It would take a total of six weeks for a heavy smoker to test completely negative. A first-time or infrequent user should be able to test negative 24 to 48 hours after use. The Olympic Committee uh, sets a cutoff of uh, negative at uh, 15 nanograms per milliliter. Marijuana and its extracts have been used medicinally since the beginning of recorded history as a muscle relaxant, as an analgesic or painkiller, as an appetite stimulant uh, to control spasms and convulsions, to calm anxiety, to treat asthma, to treat jaundice, beriberi, and ague, uh, to stimulate uh, childbirth, to relieve coughs, to treat uh, withdrawal from opiates and alcohol. Uh, and as an antibiotic. Modern medicine uses marijuana or its derivatives to treat glaucoma, nausea and pain, uh, to subdue uncontrolled movements and um, multiple sclerosis, uh, to stimulate weight gain for wasting illnesses such as cancer and AIDS. Unfortunately, abuses of the system have led to limitations on acceptance of marijuana for medicinal purposes. Marijuana and its derivatives contain THC, uh, have been incorporated into select pharmaceuticals. Uh, Dronabinol and Marinol and Sesamet are medications containing THC that can be given to individuals for nausea and pain control. Uh, Sativex is a spray that is used as an inhaler by people suffering from MS to aid with movement coordination. These medications are merely maintenance drugs. Uh, some patients have complained that the drugs give them the feeling that they are getting better when they are actually staying the same or getting worse. If the patient has a history of addiction, the medications can uh, lead to a relapse. Uh, the National Drug Control Policy Commission researched the use of marijuana as a medication and came up with the following conclusions. Cannabinoids have a natural role in pain modulation and uh, control of movement and memory. THC has potential uh, therapeutic value for pain relief, control of nausea and vomiting, and as an appetite stimulant. Smoking marijuana is a crude method of delivery of THC and also delivers potentially harmful substances. The psychological effects of cannabinoids include anxiety, reduction, uh, sedation, and euphoria, and can be therapeutic. Marijuana smoking is a serious risk factor for the development of respiratory diseases. And that is the end of the chapter. So I'll talk to you again in the near future. Uh, have a good week. Back. Welcome back from, from uh, our spring break. <laughs> I, I read five books. I read five books over the break. So I, I needed the break.